Dave Jones, and uh, this might be a little rough around the edges because I'm new to the tool myself, but uh, just go through a little bit on Dev Structure Blueprint, which is uh, kind of a server configuration management tool, kind of like Puppet and Chef. Um, so, let's do a little demo. And this is the website. You can see that. This is a little weird because I'm working out of a VMware machine here, which is a base install of CentOS. I haven't done anything to the system except give it an IP address. Um, yeah, you can't really see it on this, which is terrible, which is why I had trouble here. So I'm SSH'd into it here on the terminal, which is a lot nicer. So we'll work with that. You might have to reconnect a couple times. But. All right, nothing on this box. So anyway, blueprints on GitHub, and it's kind of an interesting project. I heard about it a couple of times before um, because the guy who worked on it with dev structure, shoot, I don't have the info in front of me, but um, what else did he work on? Richard Crowley? <coughs> All right, this is terrible, I'm sorry. Um, but he did something really cool. I think maybe Mozilla or something. Um, but what really drew me to this is because it can reverse engineer an already exit running system into uh, a configuration. So instead of having to go through what all your configuration needs and then build that out as like Puppet or Chef scripts, it's just going to kind of inspect what's what's installed and how that's configured right now. And I just thought that was really interesting to take an existing server that's already got a crap ton of stuff all over it and reduce it down to something that's repeatable on another server. So that's what I'm doing. So da -da -da -da, GitHub. So the one thing that I, uh, that's kind of bugs me about this and like all other configuration managements is that they require like dev tools to be installed on the server before you can get started. So if you go to the website here on the installation here, it needs Python and Git, and Git is just to get the, the source, so you could probably get it on a flash drive or something. So anyway, I'm gonna give this a shot to install, which may not work so well, so I've got a snapshot. And this is on a CentOS 6 system, which is a little new, so another reason I wanted to play with it. You know what, I skipped ahead, so I did already install Git. Um, let's see if I install Blueprint on this image I'm working on. Uh, actually, you know what, no I didn't. Okay, I'm gonna git clone. Got a blueprint folder. Yeah, let's do make. Oops. Alright. And it uses Python for the install process, which is why it's a prerequisite. So 
So now I should have a blueprint. I do. So I'm going to uh, let's say let's make a directory uh, in configs. So following along with this loosely, I guess I don't need to go through it, but like. So this is the syntax basically to create a blueprint. You just give it a name and it kind of just stores that. So I'm going to do blueprint create uh, with NDRB. So it's looking through my apt and yum stuff. So I'm not real keen on exactly how this works, but I think it probably has uh, what all comes on the base install for a lot of these packages and just kind of knows what's in there from the uh, the repository, you know. So this is gathering stuff that's already installed on the system to like reverse engineer? Yes, the that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So this is, this is creating my snapshot gotcha. of this image. There's probably not going to be a lot to it, but I just wanted to show this. See it's going through and looking for different stuff. I don't know. It impresses the hell out of me anyway. Uh, oh, yeah. So didn't actually get to do. Okay, so blueprint list. So this kind of reminds me of RVM. It doesn't actually make any files. It just has a thing in memory here. But now I've got an image right now called NDRB. And you know, the, the out-of-box experience for this, I should just be able to push this up to blue, uh, dev structure servers and pull it down on a new machine and fly it. Um, I'll get to that later, but let's look at the, so all I, what's that? See, I don't even know where it stores its files until I export it, and I can export them, and I'll show you. Um, but let's see, blueprint, okay, so here, I could just push that, and it will stick that on dev structure server so I can pull it down somewhere else and run it. And it gives me a, uh, a, a key. Pretty interesting. That's a, how their model works, I guess. We'll get to that later. So now I have a config for this system right here. And I'm going to treat it like a snapshot because i got more to do. So I'm going to go uh, yum install HTTP to put a web server on this machine. Web server. Open up the book. Yeah, okay. So does that work? Yeah, there you go. So we've got a website on the server now. I'm going to create a new blueprint for that. Uh, yeah, let's create. Okay. 
And now I've got both these configurations saved on my system. Now I'm going to do something special here. Because I'm sure you're pretty bored already. Dash S. Apache. Oh, wait a minute. Blueprint. Oh, show. I should probably do this this way first. So, this is the actual configuration. And there's a lot to it, but here is the general syntax of it if you're used to looking at Puppet and Chef stuff. Uh, it, yeah, it looks kind of a lot like Puppet, but it's not precisely. And it keeps these sources in a tar file that it locks up with it. And I'll show you more of that here in a second. but. Um, I'm going to add the show-s flag and what that's going to do is give us a shell script. So now I actually have a file. So I've got a tar that it uses for re some resources and I've got a bootstrap file. I'm going to see. see what that looks like. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Yeah. I told you this is a bare bones server. Yeah, it's all in the package to get Okay. This is gonna suck without syntax highlighting here. No, that's all totally readable. Yeah. Okay. Here's what happens. <laughs> so I thought it was pretty interesting. It goes through and makes some directories. Um some sing links to some files and this is pretty much just everything that was applied after the fact so a lot of this stuff probably came from just installing one package that another package depended on it and they all installed stuff so there's a bunch of changes inside the Etsy folder especially and let's see what happens This is some ugly stuff. Anyway, okay, here's a nice one. So, this is the contents of the file in a hair doc, and it's just spitting it out. Anyway, that gives you, I guess, a clue to what that looks like. So, is, is there any, like, a lot of specific stuff in there? Um, like, if you built this on a different Flavor on yeah, we so that's do. that's kind of the problem with the shell script output is that it is uh, tied to whatever you're running. So if I were to apply this on another CentOS box, no problem. But if I try to do it on like a Debian box, it wouldn't work. Uh, I'm gonna move that, that folder now. Because uh, it doesn't like competing versions of this. Uh, actually, you know what? Now let's do the puppet version here. It's a puppet. Yeah, okay, this is, I need to make it a little smaller. So, if you've seen Puppet before, it's got these uh, classes, file, Etsy, ensure that it's a directory, crypt tab, ensure that it's these permissions. Um, I mean, this isn't terribly interesting, but it, this, is, this is your system. I like it. What is nice about Puppet and Chef, uh, like, maybe this is talk for another day when I'm better informed also, but um, if anything changes, like if somebody comes around in monkeys and changes the uh, mode on that file to 700, you can just reapply the Puppet and it will go, hey, this changed, and then fix it for you. Um, so you can enforce 
uh, a baseline that way, which is kind of interesting. Back, dang it. And to be nice and redundant, let's get the shift. Which uh, flavor do you guys typically favor? Flavor? Shell script. Chef. Mm -hmm. Love it. I don't know. I'm very split. I think uh, I really like Chef and I really like Blueprint. Uh, I kind of like Puppet and I, and I feel like that if I had to pick one I should pick it but it just is kind of a little bit gross to me. Um, you know, and I haven't used any extensively, so take that as you will. A um, good friend of mine works at Puppet, though, so if I ever had a problem, I guess I could lean on him. But yeah, the chef style, I kind of like this. If you see this, it, uh, there's a file. So there's a whole crap load of files, at least in this uh, chef version. And it just kind of copies the file over instead of inlining it as a hair doc in shell. Let's see, what are we looking at? These are just a bunch of stuff. Initiate. These, these are kind of long files, and I was looking through it on a very large monitor, which didn't take nearly as long. But, um, and this is all just set up. Yeah, I mean, this is just stuff. There's nothing special about the this, uh, except for I've installed, what, HTTPD and, you know, Python tools. But this is interesting. So now that I have these two, um, these two configs here, I can show the difference between them. So I can do blueprint diff uh, Apache to NDRB, and I will make a new um, blueprint called. I don't know, uh, patchy diff. <laughs> List now has my new one. And let me do blueprint show dash s. No, wait, I don't want the shell script too much. Uh, Apache diff. So, this is thankfully nice and small. The only difference is between when I made my first snapshot and my second. So you can do patches. Yeah. Did this does this system say you've got a complex Apache config set up and working on this system? Would that grab that and push that up as well? Yes. Like yeah. it, if I made changes to like you know Etsy HTTP half, yeah, they'd totally be in here. Um, it depends on what you would output. I don't know if the shell version only takes what you changed or does some kind of weird diffing on it, but I think in most cases it just takes the entire uh, file out of Etsy and stores it. But yeah, so yum, make cache, and the, 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 the package HTTPD, and see it gets the exact version that it's installed also. Um, and to make sure it's started. It's very, very interesting. Let's see. Yeah, let's see what the puppet looks like, just because we're having fun here. better idea of what the puppet would be. Yeah, 
know, I wish I could re-tab this. Class packages. So, this is not too bad either, even though it's still kind of alien to me. The point is, you don't even need those unless you actually are built on a chef for a puppet shop. Anyway, this last part is really just not going to work for me, but I'll, I'll give it a shot anyway. Let's see. So, blue, green, fast. Let's say... Okay, yeah. Blueprint push. And I'm just gonna do a uh, patchy diff. And I'm gonna output that to uh, push.txt just because I lost it last time. What is that number? Blueprint. Oh, gotcha. Oops. So, created a secret key, which ends in dh, which I like for some reason. And then it gives me these, these keys and a server, and like, that's on the server now, basically. So I should be able to pull down a uh, fresh box and apply it. My problem here is, uh, so I ran through this last month because I thought I was going to do this talk last minute last month and it didn't happen and then I haven't looked at it again until just now. So I apologize for stumbling over it a little bit because it's been a while. Um, yeah, I can do this though. So let me just put this down and get this going. So I'm going to take my VMware here. And I know you can't see what's going on very well, but I'm reverting back to with nothing is there but the give, get and dev tools. <laughs> so now I'm back to where I was with a fresh install. Um, and this shouldn't work. Yeah, no service. That's like that. Uh, and then get back over here. Okay. New tab. Okay, and I've got shell on my new one. And since I've got the dev tools installed, then all I really need to do is install blueprint, which is not there. So let me do that again real quick. Uh, I wish I had another snapshot after this one. Okay, blueprints installed now. Now all I should have to do is pull
pull that file that I stored on DevStructure's servers. Where is that at? Okay. So, blueprint pull, and then I get this long URL, which I saved in my other tab. I couldn't do this easily before because I didn't cut paste into this thing, but since I'm SSH'd in, I guess it's a lot easier. My secret key. You go over oh, is it? Yeah. <coughs> You're memorizing this stuff here? Slash my first. Oh, it says slash the name. Yeah. Uh, which. What did I call that? Apache did? Damn. Did I misspell something? Yeah. Hmm? It's apes. Come on, man. This is <laughs> the apes. You loved it. You said so. I don't know if I loved it that much. <laughs> well, evidently, everyone else really loved it and also loved the idea of. It the is apes. Out. Okay. Thank you. <sighs> Stored locally. So, blueprint list. And now I have it back on a fresh machine. And blueprint, what does it apply? <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's going to take like a minute too, probably just because it tarballed up all those Etsy files. And but uh, yeah, you don't have to watch that, but it's going to do its thing. I've, I've done this before. <laughs> you do it without their servers? Can you like send it to S3 or your own servers or something like that? See, I think that's what the uh, the ability to pull it out into a puppet or chef or a shell script config does for you. Otherwise, yeah, I think you have. They go through there. They do say that though they have their own server that they provide for free, that you could set up your own on S3. Oh, so that'd be cool. Um, I didn't see like having if you your were own get about, you know, them getting your stuff. Yeah, you know, if you were at like, lots of enterprises, are pretty worried about. We have a lot of customers that would be like, right. Well, I get a feeling that's how they make their money, right? Right. You get private repositories or something. I think it's awesome. But yeah, I liked it. So. Even though I've played with both Chef and Puppet a little bit, I kind of hated them after doing it. Just because it's such a pain to have to build it up from um, like a base ground. And to say this, even though what it outputs is really gross because it has every minute detail, um, you probably want that in a lot of situations. So I'm a fan. Well, it's nice to pull up a. Uh like an existing environment that's grown organically, you know, especially one of those environments where nobody wants to touch it because they don't want to mess it up. Right, those are the environments that precisely they, they probably need some kind of configuration management. Yeah. So, uh, if nothing else, check these in your version control and now you got your server. But yeah, uh, I fell asleep, but I'm probably pretty much done anyway, right? 96. Well, still running, you have to make cash. <laughs> <laughs> See, it still wants to do things. I'm done. Yeah, well, it's downloading the SQLite, re the, the SQLite file for the repos. So it's that's where I how, to, how to run. You have to install that for Apache. Whatever. This is a lot faster 
when you're plugged in. Yeah, it's a lot faster in the office. It's also probably a lot faster. It's like instant. You don't yes. have like ninety percent of your tarball and config files and stuff. Yeah. That's why I kept my config as small as possible and only did the diff instead of the whole thing. Uh, so there was a there's a method to this madness, but th I still don't know if this is going to be done. So I assume you performed this on one of your production servers at some point. No, no. Oh, you haven't. No. We we could do it on on the new VM. I mean, you totally could. It's not like a problem. Uh, I was just evaluating it because I've heard it. I heard it one too many times, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to sit down and play with this because uh, it was mentioned on like Ruby five like three years ago or something. Like, no, <laughs> well, not three years. But a long time. About, ago. about a year ago. Probably about a year ago, and I was like. Got to check this out, and I didn't. And he's had the tab open in Chrome ever since. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. Uh, Reminds me, Jason, how many tabs? Uh, can you see any letters? <laughs> I can see. I can see I this one window. I can see like half of the third letter, depending on which letters. Usually two letters. Yeah, usually two letters. Uh, you can see any more than the favorite kind, you're not doing it. Alas, no. What if that's possible? Oh, it's you actually a line right now. I'm concerned myself too much with how many tabs I have open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're crying. Yeah. Yeah. Forty-three. Oh, there you go. So it actually applied. <laughs> And and started HTTP curl localhost <laughs> and we're up and running again. Cool.